Hey guys, this is Pharaoh2091, and welcome back to Let's Play 999. Last time we left off, we were continuing on new dialogue, and it seems like we're definitely going towards a new ending here. You know, which is meant to be the, you know, the true ending. However, this, what is going on now, was not expecting it. It turns that, uh, Santa's had enough of the bullcrap, and he took, is taking, uh, Juna hostage. And forcing Ace and Lois to go with him to get out of here. So, really wasn't expecting that from him, but you know what? We really can't do anything at the moment. After what seemed like an eternity, they stopped in front of the door marked 9. Santa smiled. Alright now, let's get those hands on the scanner panel. What's the hold up? What, you think I'm fucking around here? I don't give a shit about this girl. The red doesn't need a person, you know. All I need is a bracelet. You get it? Good. Now put your fucking hands on the scanner. I'm not gonna say it again. He shoved the revolver harder against June's head and she winced. Fine. Fine. A side defeated and placed his hand on the scanner panel. Lois went next. Lois glared at Santa and slammed her hand onto the scanner panel. Before the fourth asterisk blinked on. Good job. Now, Lotus, pull that lever. As soon as the door opens, you get your ass in there. Try and think stupid, and you know what happens, right? Chupa could hear, almost hear Lotus's teeth grind. The door slid open. Door number nine opened at last. It opened with a low, powerful rumble. A drum roll to, w to welcome the chosen few. Alright, go! Lois and Ace walked through the door, their eyes furious but defeated. Santa waited until they were all the way inside and hauled himself and June across the th threshold as well. Six, eight... Later! And they're gone. After exactly nine seconds, the door swung shut. The gust of air he created caused the candles of the altar to flicker and die. The room fell silent. Junpei, Clover, and Seven had been left behind. Clover looked down her hand and traced with her finger at the faint blue veins that crisscrossed them. Seven shoved his arms in the front of his overalls and scratched his stomach. No one spoke. Silence made their air feel thick and oppressive. Desperate for something, anything to occupy his mind, Junpei walked to the larger of the two nine doors. He stood in front of it and looked at the red. A red engaged. He moved to a smaller door. The red, red vacant. He did just remove the remaining people of seven. There is no possible way for them to open a door of nine on it. Unless they get a two. Chupe touched the surface of the door. He thought about June, about Akani. He thought about June, about Akani Kurashiki. Was she safe? That was all that mattered to him. If she was alive, if she had escaped this horrible boat, that was what Junpei had prayed for. Seven came came up next to him. He pulled off his hat, scratched his head and sighed. So, what do you want to do, Junpei? What do you mean, what do I want to do? What can we do? Seven opened his mouth to respond when... And there's a knocking. A noise echoed through the room. Someone was pounding on something vigorously. It wasn't mechanical. It was certainly human. Junpei and Seven looked at one another. What the hell's that? Shh! Quiet! Clover motioned to Seven to be quiet. She put one finger to her lips and closed her eyes in concentration. Come on, it's not that hard to figure out. The three of them listened, trying to determine where that sound was, com was coming from. Where... Where was it coming from? Could it be... Hey, I think it's coming from his coffin. You're right. Let's open it. But how? Where are those muscles for? For show? You're telling me to force it open? Just shut up and try! Jupe and Seven grabbed hold of the coffin. They tried to get a good grip with that little purchase they could find and pulled with their, all their strength. Uh, nothing? Nothing. Damn it! Man, it won't even budge! 
There was some sort of keypad attached to the coffin. Its purpose would not have been difficult to determine. Their eyes were almost immediately drawn to it. Not another one. Yeah, looks like it. Do you think we have to put in the right password or it won't open? I think so. The noise wasn't stopping. In fact, it was getting louder. They had no idea who was in the coffin, but they wanted out, and they wanted out now. They had no idea what, the, uh, what they were supposed to do. Without a passcode, it didn't seem like there was a lot they could do. Oh, I really hope, I just wish I could just go in there and just tell them what to do. But they'll get it eventually, I'm assuming, anyway. They couldn't even tell how many numbers the passcode needed to be. Isn't there a hint somewhere? Well, let's look for one. Unfortunately, they didn't seem to have they had to be anywhere. There, there didn't seem to be any anything near the coffin. Clover ran to examine the pews and seven investigated the desk, but they turned up nothing. The sound still wouldn't stop. It wasn't a noise that belonged in that room. What was the passcode? What was Jubilee supposed to do? How was he supposed to figure it out? He needed something. Come on, we all know what's in there. The world blinked. Suddenly there was a voice inside Junpei's head. Truth had gone, truth had gone, truth had gone. Ah, now truth is asleep in the darkness of the sinister hand. W what? What the hell was that? That voice? Jubei was utterly and completely baffled. Huh? What are you talking about? What's up? Seven and Clover ran over to him, but Jimmy didn't know what to tell them. If he told them he'd hear a voice, they'd laugh, or worse, think he was going insane. So all he said was, Oh, nothing. He cleared his throat a little too loud and looked pointedly down at his bracelet. There's a pair of small buttons protruding from either side of it. Junpei pressed buttons on the bra of the bracelet. Uh, which, what did I say? Right, left, right, left. Truth is gone. Tr yeah, so it's right, left, right, left, right, left. Right, left, right, left, right, left. That was it. And now we get the passcode that we're looking for. Eight numbers blinked on and off on the bracelet display. Junpei checked one last time. And definitely we get the numbers again. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. Huh? Huh? Hey, what the hell were those numbers? Oh my gosh, are those? Jumi didn't answer. He simply walked straight to the coffin. He knelt down in front of the keypad, running over the numbers in his head so they wouldn't forget. Man, please don't forget it. With trembling fingers, he punched them in. And there was all. That was all of them. He punched the E button. There was a moment of complete silence. Then there was the sound of the coffin lid unlatching. Someone sat up of it. Uh, ah! This must be a beautiful moment. Oh, is that you, Clover? I apologize for worrying you. Snake! Oh my. How did you... Junpei. And Seven? Is that you? Is everyone else there as well? Just like Rip Van Winkle. Still, it was very much like Snake to simply cut to the heart of the matter and ask. Junpei Seven shared a wry smile. Clover's eyes were filled with tears. You're back! With a cry of joy, she, she leapt into Snake's arms. Aww. Gently now. My body's still a little weak. You're back! You're back! Clover looked like nothing so much as a lost child who finally found her home. She cried and cried and cried. Her eyes were red and her nose was running. She hiccuped and gasped as if she were to, about to begin hyperventilating. You're back! You're really here! Her voice was happy and almost desperate, as if she feared he would dis disappear if she stopped talking to him. Tear after tremendous tear rolled its way down her face. Her small arms strained as she clutched Snake's body as tightly as she could. Perhaps she had to convince herself he was real. Perhaps she was worried he would be gone the moment she let go. Perhaps she simply didn't know what else to do. 
Oh, you're back! Come now, what's gotten into you? You're acting as though I've returned from the grave. Not as though you did! I really thought you were dead! Huh? Jerk! Idiot! 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 Oh, that's a beautiful moment. Clover broke into sobs so great she could no longer talk. It was a touching reunion between brother and sister. Even though Junpei knew uh, knew they had little time, and every minute they waited as uh, waited was a minute they uh, they wasted, it felt cruel to pull them apart. Junpei Seven sat down at one of the pews, waiting for Clover to calm down before explaining to Snake what had transpired. Ah, uh, I see. I believe I understand things rather well now. Thank you. In the shower room, there's a dead body wearing my clothes. Because of that, you thought that I was dead. Correct? He had quickly and neatly summarized the events of several hours. Jupe nodded. He also discovered a corpse in the captain's quarters, and Santa turned on turned on you here, in this room. Do I have it straight? Seven had had, rather, had been rather surprised to learn of the to learn of the dead body in the captain's quarters. With everything that had been taking place, Jupe had simply forgotten to mention it to him. Well then, I've got a pretty decent idea of what happened while I was indisposed, but it's still something of a mystery who did all and who did all this and why. The corpse in the shower that looked like me, and the corpse in the captain's quarters, why were they killed in the, in the way they were? You don't know? No. Why would I? The guy in the shower room, we don't know who he is, so let's just call him Mr. X. Okay, <clears throat> Mr. X, Guy X, it doesn't matter. Anyway, this Mr. X is wearing Snake's clothes, but you're wearing some kind of weird robes. That means somebody took your clothes and put them on Mr. X. We need to figure out who that was. I apologize, but I have no idea who might have done so, uh, done this to me. I only just now woke up. I was unconscious during all the events you just described to me. They, they, they almost undressed me and changed my clothes during that time. When were you knocked out? When we split up to look for the red. Where did you, where did they get you? Do you remember? It was a small room in one of the hallways on sea deck. What happened? The same thing that happened to every one of us when we were abducted. A can releasing some sort of gas was thrown into the room. I believe the gas is some sort of inca incapacitating agent. Then, then that means it was zero. Looks that way, huh? There's nothing else I have to tell you. When I woke up, I was in this coffin. Chippy crossed his arms and thought, Why had Zero made Mr. X wear Snake's clothes? Well, how had the results of that trick benefited Zero? It was a mystery. Chippy couldn't make sense of it. He also didn't have a satisfactory explanation for how he'd discern a key code for the coffin. It just didn't make any sense. Truth had gone, truth had gone, and truth had gone. What did that even mean? Did it mean anything? And why had Junpei felt compelled to push the buttons in a bracelet after hearing them? Seven had asked him about it while they were waiting for Clover to finish crying. He had no answer for him then, and he still didn't. All he could say that it seemed to have been a subconscious reaction. Hmm. His fingers had simply moved on their own accord. It was only it was only explanation that made any sort of sense, and it, it almost made no sense. Oops, I accidentally paused my video there. I don't know why that happened. Actually, I'll probably get my hand away from the uh, <laughs> from the pause button. I'll be good. Jubei had no idea what any of it meant. His mind was a maelstrom of mysteries, clues and theories and more mysteries. He could barely think. And of course, Snake and Clover had been subjects in a similar experiment nine years ago. Yep, that's that, that's definitely what Clover told us. It's like, but why this experiment? And it was all done by Cradle Pharmaceuticals, including Ace. Apparently he set it up nine years ago, but it's like, why do this? There had been another experiment conducted on the same ship nine years ago. A girl had died during it. Morphogenetic field theory. The two murderers. Switching clothes. The notary game. And whatever strange thing had, had was happening to Junpei himself. The maelstrom in, in his head spat out words and ideas that disappeared back into it almost as though it, it, he grasped them. But as he, so he struggled through them, Junpei began to realize something. 
There was something that tied all of them together. Zero. He was the ringleader. The person who had trapped nine people on a sinking ship. Zero knew everything. If they could un uncover Zero's identity, all of their questions would be answered. Who was Zero? Shunpei had had the beginnings of a theory. If he could only test it. Or perhaps... At any rate, we'll have plenty of time to decipher details later. For now, it is of utmost importance that we escape. Junpei, it was 4.30 last time you checked the clock, yes? That means we have less than an hour. We must hurry. Hey, uh, how are we gonna get out of here? Was well, that obvious? Through the other number 9 door. And yeah, sure enough. That's gonna work. Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> yeah, you're right! With Snake, we can open that door! Don't tell me you hadn't figured that out! As they sniped back and forth, Junpei glanced at Snake's left hand. He was wearing a bracelet with a 2 on it. Come on, you gotta tell me these things! I, uh, assumed you figured it out. Ah, oh, forget it! Let's just get going! Seven stomped off towards sm smaller, number 9 door. Clover, Snake, and Junpei followed. Seven quickly laid his hand on the red, an asterisk appeared on the screen. Junpei and the others followed suit, and they laid their hands on a scanner panel. S soon, there were four asterisks on the screen. Seven glanced at them and laid his hand on a lever in the red. Alright, you guys ready to go? Yeah. Yep. Junpei paused for a moment. Not yet. Huh? Before we go, I'd like to check something. You want to check something? Yeah, before I do... Seven, could you pull the lever? I want to make sure we can verify with just the four of us. What do you mean? We don't need... Just do it, alright? But if the door opens, don't go in yet, okay? Please. This is really important. I really need to check this, okay? Work with me here. Junpei looked directly into Seven's eyes. The older man looked back for a moment and nodded. Fine. We'll do whatever he wants. Seven pulled down on a lever and door nine creaked open. There, then they waited. Six, seven, eight... After nine seconds, the door closed. Alright, that means the four of us can go into door nine. So? We knew that already. It's obvious. Obvious. Yeah, you're right. It is. Now what happens if we add Zero's bracelet? What? Zero's bracelet? Why don't you take it out, Clover? For a moment, Clover looks surprised, but she recovered quickly and struck her and st stuck her tongue out of Junpei. <laughs> so you did know I had it. I picked it up because I thought it might be useful sometime. Yep, she definitely had it. She reached into one of the pockets off her uh, vol voluminous jacket and produced a bracelet. Jubei took it from her and placed it on, and turned it to seven. This was in the left hand of corpse in the captain's quarters. If you look at it, you can see it's got a zero on the face. Just to make this a little easier to talk about, I'm going to call the guy we found dead in the captain's quarters Cap. If Cap was really zero, then I should be able to open door nine with just me, Clover, and this, and this bracelet. Right. But most importantly, if you if you were Cap and this was your game, would you really put one of these bracelets on yourself? Anyway, let's just give it a shot. Clover, give me your hand. Okay. After he, after he and Clover scanned their bra bracelets, he waved Caps over to the scanner panel. Then he pulled the lever. However, it does not work. The door didn't open. The red display read error. I knew it. Now, what does this tell us? Maybe the bracelet has to be one uh, has to be on your wrist in order for it to work. No, that's impossible. How did you see how the panel showed a third asterisk when I scanned Cap's bracelet? Whether or not it's your wrist doesn't matter. All you have to do is put the bracelet near the panel for it to register. Seven waved his bracelet in front of the scanner panel. Sure enough, a, sing or a single asterisk appeared on the red. Huh. Looks like you're right. See? S so, what does that mean? There's only one possibility. That bracelet is in the number zero. Is that what you're saying? That's right. Then, what number is it? Let's find out. Junpei... Scanner bracelet of this combination. Uh, well, I know the thing's gonna be six, 
because that's what we figured out in the last uh, the last one. So I'm, I'm gonna quickly figure it out, but then I'm gonna end, I'm gonna stop the video here because it's already going on 20 minutes, and I don't know how much longer this is gonna take. Because I'm assuming we still have a little bit more to go. Because I mean, what else is there to do? You know, I mean, I'm, there could be more puzzles we have to solve. So, uh, so let me see here. So of course it's gonna be six. So we got, and this is a door nine. Snake and Junpei, that's 7, plus 6 is 13, nope. Snake and Clover, actually, that, well, we already saw we, we already saw that wasn't going to work. Snake, 5, plus, no, Snake, 2, plus 5, 7, plus 14, plus 6, that's not going to work. Five, uh, 2, I, keep, I don't know why I keep thinking Snake is 5, 2, plus 4, 6, plus 7, 13 plus 6 has 19. That won't work either. Uh, 7 plus Junpei. 7 plus 5 is 12. Plus 6 17. Nope. 7 plus Clover. Wait. 7 plus 4. That's 11. Plus 6. 17. Wait a minute. And this one's 8. What the hell did that say? 7 plus Junpei. That's 13. Wait a minute. Thirteen. Six. That's... not right? Am I not doing this right? Oh, man, my digital roots have been off lately. You know, wait a minute. They, they give me a damn calculator and never what? use it. What? But now I don't... Oh, God, now I just don't, don't even remember. Okay, digital root of... Well, that was stupid. Why did I even do that? No. So, let's see. There was Snake plus Junpei, which is, which is 5 plus the Captain. It's supposed to be 6. Enter. 13. That's 4. Okay, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to figure it out off screen because I'm, I'm just wasting too much time. I'm, I made myself look like an idiot, practically. So, in any case, guys, um, as usual, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for Let's Play 999. I'll see you guys later.